How's it going folks? Uh, this is part four of the resurrecting my ski uh, video. I have ordered parts. The parts came. Got them. Saved a lot of money trying to avoid buying name brand. So anyway. Now first part I'm going to replace is going to be this uh, muffler resonator water box whatever you name it this normally at a regular jet ski retail store goes for about 144 150 bucks yeah i'm not gonna pay that much for a piece of plastic instead of putting this back on we are using i believe it's a 440 90 degree angle stainless steel muffler tubing i don't know if it's a quarter inch thick i mean it's pretty stout it's pretty it's solid it fits the hose just fine so it directly replace that plastic piece and pretty much all you're doing by removing that box is doing the same thing that the aftermarket retail retailers uh sell which is just a straight through pipe but this is way cheaper this is like 35 i think it cost me 34.95 or something along those lines so it's not bad and the kit from this name brand store just to make a straight through pipe is like minimum it's like 500 bucks yeah it's not to be a cheapskate i mean this is solid material you're using stock parts but it'll do the job second item on the list was the temperature sensor or in the parts store it was a coolant sensor got the part number of the parts store that i'm not going to mention this one went for i believe it was 34 dollars, 35 dollars at that store but the same set exact part number is the same exact part bought it on another major retail store online and it cost me like 13 dollars nsc do recommend it so $34, $13, same part. So, and last but not least, this is not one of the parts that broke, but I'm, since I'm at it, I'm gonna replace it. These were sold to me as stainless steel. Obviously, they are not. I mean, this part is, but this part, definitely not. So I got 100% stainless steel hose clamps to replace all these. So now I got everything the way I want it. So we're actually going to start connecting things back up. Well, before we start dealing with the problem areas, Yeah, I think I'm gonna take that back. I'm not gonna install this first because there's kind of like very little room back there. So I'm going to. So it's in there. Now we put this part in. All right, holes get out of the way. And you move. All right, so we're gonna set up now the uh, the wastegate to be installed. So now I'm going to be working on the sensor, temperature sensor uh, of the muffler. Maybe I should give it a clean. 
I don't know. They don't. I don't know. It looks pretty gnarly, but this is not the intended uh, use of this thing. But that's what I'm going to use it for because I ain't got nothing else. I just want to clean up the threads a little bit. Oh, that's working. Just got to make sure that I'm going with the threads. And I know I'm overdoing it, but I'm doing a little bit of uh, blue Loctite. Just a little bit for two reasons. One, to lubricate it on the way in. Two, well actually three reasons. Lubricate it on the way in, locking it in place, and hopefully with the Teflon, we'll just avoid any leaks. So now this joker goes like... Like that. So I'm going to place the one of the last hoses. So I got waste kit, exhaust, and then this is the one that goes into the intake of the engine or the intake manifold. So it goes the three inch side over there and the two inch side over here, which kind of kind of don't understand why they made it that way. I mean, just make it three inch all the way don't you think how do i know i'm not an engineer so they might know something i don't stupid clamp i would have put it the other way i should have put it the other way why didn't i So I finished up, connected everything, put all the stuff. By the way, comment, like, share, subscribe. If you got any suggestions or ideas tomorrow, which I'm probably gonna put in this video anyways later on, we're gonna test it. Everything seems to be okay. I'm gonna do like a dry run real quick and we'll see you tomorrow and see how this worked out. Well, folks, it's the next day. I am about to just give it a quick crank to see if it's gonna do what it's supposed to do. I'm a little leery about cranking it, but I mean, at this point, there's, there's nothing left. You just gotta either go for it or not. So I guess here we go. All right. Let's see. It's a little louder. Um I must say, but it turned on. I mean, I can always eventually buy that part if I, if I want to quiet it down. I can always buy that part. All right, so I'm going to get everything set up, buttoned up, and ready to go. So we can go to the, I don't know if we're going to go beach or lake. But I guess we'll let you know. Yeah, you'll see.
folks. So it seems that I was able to repair all the major issues of the ski, but uh, the exception, with the exception of the IBR, either the I IBR module, it, it's fried or maybe the wiring got melted or something. But that's, uh, I guess that'll be episode number five. But besides the fact that the machine is a little bit louder, that that pipe worked just fine there's no water coming into the ski everything everything is working perfect with the exception of the ipr so we should be good to go we'll see you back at the shop